We're only one game into the season, and the injury bug is already feasting away. But don't worry, Matt and I have you covered with some great injury replacements on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. You can find me on Twitter at DomMartinoFB. Here, as always, with my brother, my co-host, Matthew Arne, and you can find him on Twitter at Matthew underscore Arne. If you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, we would truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. And if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, hit that little bell below. It subscribes to the channel and gives you notification every time we drop a new episode. And lastly, but most importantly, to Matt and I, guys, join us on the subtext platform the link to our subtext is in the bio wherever you're watching or listening to this episode uh then we just offer so much more on there than we could offer in this 30 minute episode including uh instant alerts right to your phone with call-ups injury alerts and much much more uh but guys we're gonna get right into it uh you know as i said the injury injury bug is you know holding uh, no prisoners uh taking no names and uh matt and i got you covered though you know so don't worry we got some great names for you and matt who are we talking about first today all right, so we actually got some good insight on a guy you probably should add right now, especially if you're missing out on closer. I figured this is a very important topic we need to open up with, and that's Michael Kopech. You're looking at me like I got five heads, but I completely understand. You know, Kopech really hasn't been able to live up to the hype as a starter, but I think that's more of the fact that he just can't make it through a few times to the rotation with throwing as hard as he does. The guy throws gas. He can hit like 100 and change, and it's not even a problem for him. But the problem is, is there's just not as much effect after they've seen it a couple times you just don't swing at those really fast pitches but the problem what i love about kopech now is you're only going to see him for an inning and right now he's having the opportunity to go out and take the closing job and i don't think i think once he gets the job he's not going to give it back so and here's here's my reasoning for it for starters he fought he fits all of my stat points i like out of my closer right the k per nine in 129 innings he had 134 strikeouts He's done it where even in like 2021, right before he got hurt, he had 69 innings and he finished with 103 strikeouts in a single season. So when you're looking at a closer, especially like a higher end one, you want to see that massive, you know, innings to strike out uh, difference. And that is one of those telltale signs. If he d- is able to just be successful in one inning, which is usually what any pitcher can do of his caliber, um, he's going to be really valuable. And then he's catching saves. The only problem is he plays for the Sox. So, I mean, I get that part, but still, even if he turns around and gets you like 25 saves this year, which I think is well within the realm of possibilities, you know, it's great. And this is a first shot. I mean, look, you're down Devin Williams, you're down um, Jordan Romano, you're down Duran, you're down God knows who else at this point, Paul right? Seawall. Paul Seawall. Paul like, Seawall. Like, they're dropping like flies. It's actually looking like the apocalypse out there in terms of closers. So, like, Michael Kopech, I feel, is somebody you can get for almost three ninety nine dollars too. 15% um, on Donya. Right. Thank you. And that's one of the things that's like, okay, go out, scoop him up now while, you know, before he goes and gets the first save. Because the second he gets that save this today, well, tomorrow for you guys, he's going to be added everywhere. And you're just going to miss out on the opportunity to possibly have something. I just want to throw something out too. I don't throw too many advanced stats out there, but on three of his pitches, he has 25% or higher in the whiff rates, right? 26% on his four seamer. 27% on his slider and 33% on his changeup. Okay. That's very successful in the whiff rates. And now you're only going to see it once. That's going to be a game changer for Michael Kopech and his upside for the season. Yeah, Matt, great take there on Kopech. And I, I love that you pointed out the 2021 season because that season he uh Kopech threw 44 games uh, you know, in total. 40 of those were out of the bullpen. 
So he really, you know, um, excelled in that bullpen role back in 2021 and had pretty much the best year of his major league career. So I really think there is a chance that Kopech can take the role and run away with it. Uh, at 15% owned, you can't really go wrong right now if you are down a couple of closers. Uh, but let's move on to this next guy, somebody who's actually transitioning the opposite way. Uh, it's Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks goes over to the Giants and just has a monster monster spring training in his last outing was five innings 10 strikeouts jordan hicks was 40 percent owned on yahoo and he's somebody that throws super super hard got up there you know over 100 miles an hour consistently when he was coming out of the bullpen but he's tampered it back he's gotten to about 95 96 on the fastball the breaking stuff still looks pretty good with hicks so I really think that he can, you know, take things to the next level and be a pretty successful, you know, starter in the bigs, not maybe a guy that's going to go, you know, six, seven innings consistently. So in those quality starts leagues, you might want to, you know, uh, not really go crazy for Hicks, but I, I really like him. You know, he's still fairly young. Uh, I think that he can be valuable right now, and especially with, you know, starting pitchers being super hurt with Garrett Cole and, you know, the Brian Woos and the Yuri Perez is, and plus everybody else that is, is down at the moment. I think Hicks is somebody that you can go out there and grab and feel pretty comfortable with him um, as one of your leader, you know, lower end starting pitchers. Yeah. I like Jordan Hicks a lot. I like the idea of where he's going to pitch. And uh, I like the fact that he brought down that velocity. So, you know, great take Dom. Uh, I stand behind it. And honestly, I wouldn't say he's a must add, but he's definitely somebody that, could possibly turn around and be valuable. Um, usually through these first two weeks, you usually see a pitcher break out and then have value long-term from either three quarters of the season or the whole season and just really just thrust themselves to the top. So it, there's a chance that Jordan Hicks's transition could be one, make him fall into that category. But let's move on to another guy that I really like, and that's Chase Silsa. Um, Chase, honestly, um, is is looking like he might be able to go go ahead and – possibly be somewhat valuable for fantasy baseball he's not going to be really you know blow you away in the wins category but who cares at this point he's free 99 and he's he looks great i mean this spring alone 13 innings pitch he has 15 strikeouts he has a 203 era with a with a 0.675 whip that's fantastic uh gave up two home runs which is one thing that's kind of a little scary within the 15 innings pitch but at the same time it is what it is because you know in his short periods of, you know, career, he doesn't really give up that many home runs in like at least 2023, 20, 22. He did give up a lot for his ratio, but it is what it is. He was able to bring that down in 23 from 28 innings to 52 innings of seven to nine. And I'm okay with that. And on top of that, he's very successful with his sweeper and his sweeper looks great. And it's something that's really, you know, been successful at 33% whiff rate as well. I love it. Chase Sil Silseth looks like he's going to be, somebody that we might be considering also for at least a couple weeks. Yeah, I really like Chase Hillseth. He's 6% owned on Yahoo. I picked him up in a couple of leagues. He had his ups and downs last year in the bigs, but you know what? As um, you know, a 22 year old, uh, I'll take it. Um, I mean, as a 23 year old, uh, last year, I'll, I'll, I'll take it, you know, um, through 52 innings, you know, the three, three, nine, six ERA, 52 innings, 56 strikeouts, uh, FIP wasn't fantastic, but you know what? He has that prospect pedigree still super, super young. I think Chase, uh, Chase Silseth's big spring is really an indication of him taking a step forward and, you know, going in the right direction, heading into the 2024 season. Uh, I, I think at 6% owned, we got to get him up. He should be at least like 40% owned. Let's see where he goes on uh, his first couple of starts. Um, but, you know, with all these injuries right now, you need names. And I think Chase still set to somebody that we'll be happy with. But, uh, Matt, real quick, before we jump into these next few names, we got um, a, a couple of more good starting pitchers and some bats as well. But we do have a quick ad for you guys real quick. And guys, of course, we're talking about FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel an official sport, sportsbook partner of the NBA. And guys, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? 
and you have to turn the volume down with all that shouting. Make the switch over to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for your every day to bring you the biggest sports stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels or app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And then, guys, once again, we're talking to you about the Locked On Diamond Club on the subtext platform. Once again, link to bio. Uh, link is in our bio. Guys, we're offering so much more than we can on this 30-minute podcast. Uh, you get instant alerts right to your phone, including injury alerts, prospect call-ups, and so much more. We're going to have our waiver wire rankings, uh, and you know, you're going to want to stay ahead of your league by making sure you're in the Diamond Club where your path to victories begin. Subscribe now and elevate your fantasy baseball experience to a new level. And all right, Matt. That is a lot of talking for me, brother. And I know we got a couple of names that you're eager to talk about. So uh, who we got next? All right. We're going to talk Nolan Shanguel. Uh, You know, guy that kind of thrusted himself to the majors after being drafted last year and then said, okay, well, you know what, guys? Um, you put me at easy mode. I need to come and come to the bigs and, you know, show my stuff. And so he did. It's not like he completely balled out and he was like this, like, utter force. Right. Like he was, he was just good. Right. So he had a, he batted 275 in his first appearance after just being a freshie, like in, into the, into the minors, I might add, went from rookie all the way to double A and then to the majors. He had 109 at bats in the bigs. He had 19 runs. He had three doubles, a bomb, 16 ribs. He had, uh, what do you call it? 20 walks to 19 strikeouts, which is phenomenal. Batted that 275 and OPS of 732. Everything kind of like looks like, okay, this kid can translate in terms of, you know, plate discipline, things like that. And, you know, good back, back, back speed and control. Now, on top of that, you got to kind of look at, okay, what could this kid's future look like, right? What is the upside? Why am I picking this up? Why are we even talking about this kid today, right? Well, if you look at his college career, his college career is actually pretty impressive. He played at Florida, Florida Atlantic, and he had 19 home runs in 197 at bats in his senior year. He also had 64 ribs, 14 stolen bases, and he batted 447. Now, I understand. I'm not stupid. I know college plays with metal bats. I know there's a big difference from, you know, even, you know, minor league baseball to college. Like, there is a step up not only in talent, but the fact that this is in his profile, he's 19 years old. He's also six foot four and 220 pounds. Well, he's not 19 at the moment. He's no, he's no, I'm 20, so, yeah. I know oh, that in I'm college saying. when he was in yes. college. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. So I understand like, you know, he still has some growth as a man to go and probably get a little bit more power under it, but the dude has all the makings, height, weight, potential, uh, and just pedigree of just being a, a successful college player. I could totally see how he thrusted himself through. He's somebody I've, I've kept on my watch list that I'm waiting to pull the trigger on. But, you know, he goes out and does some damage this year. I, early, I'm totally running and scooping him up. Even his spring was impressive. I don't mean to spend so much time on him. But he still managed to show up with two bombs at the, the spring, eight ribs, two stolen bases. The batting average was actually low. But, I mean, I can't count that in a small sample size of spring training of 48 at-bats. But Shanguel is looking like he might have something to, to deliver. And he's somebody, maybe not add, but definitely keep an eye on because he might be somebody we're adding by the end of the weekend. Matt, you're actually a hundred percent spot on. Last year when he came up, I, I for I know you you loved him. I wasn't super in on him yet. I wanted to see a little bit, but I really liked what I saw. You know, you pointed out that walk to strikeout ratio was great. The batting average was great. He's six foot four. Um. 220 absolute yeah. unit so you know matt right off those minor league stats where he showed off the power and speed i think it finally comes to fruition in the majors whether it's this year or next year i think this kid is going to be a force to be reckoned with and somebody that we're going to you know have on our fantasy baseball rosters for years to come so don't miss out on first baseman nolan shanuel who is actually um seven percent owned on yahoo uh, let's move on to a name we might be a little bit more familiar with let's talk about um a guy who went from one new york team to the other let's talk about luis severino and Luis Severino is, you know, I've actually been going back and forth with Met fans, um, you know, as a Yankee fan. I'm like, Severino's a good pitcher. I'm not really worried about if he's a good pitcher or not. I'm worried about if he can stay on the field. 
Uh, I really don't know what happened in Severino, as you know, um, 89 innings last year. I really think it was a blimp on the radar, honestly, because if you look at the rest of his career, he's always been really, really dominant besides 2016. Every other year of his career, Severino's been a very, very good pitcher. So I think this year he finds a way to get back on track. Honestly, I think he might have been pitching through an injury or something of the sort last year that maybe we didn't know about. He was in spring training so far. or Well, you know, spring training's wrapped up now, but in spring training, Severino had four starts, a 1-2-9 ERA, 14 innings, 12 strikeouts, and an 0-7 whip with only one walk. Uh, absolutely love what I've seen from him, and I know the talent is there with Severino. So right now he's 51% owned on Yahoo, 1% higher than we were aiming for. But this is a guy that, honestly, if he's available on your waiver wire, he could wind up being an SP4 for you if he really you know, can get back to those – um uh 20 17 18 seasons where he was 190 innings plus 220 strikeouts plus uh under a 3 4 ERA in both of those years with a solid whip I think Severino needs to be owned in like 70 80% of leagues at the moment Yeah I mean I don't know I mean he's definitely worth the speculative ad I mean you know you you talk about the pedigree and who he was you know you would assume that you know he didn't just lose it all it's not like Space Jam where, you know, you had aliens going <laughs> suck his talent out. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, there's there's all the possibilities. And, I, I mean, why not? I mean, 51% owned if he's out there and, like, you just had Brian Wu go down unexpectedly. Severino might be somebody you just want to see with how it plays out at least over this next week. And yeah. then if he doesn't pan out, drop him. Who cares? Exactly. You know? Like, even just roster him and don't start him. But, like, if he does have a good start, you know, boom, you keep him for the next week. You see how long the rental can last and then see what the matchup is, whether you trust him or not. It may pan out and be a long-term play, but there's no assurances. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about uh, Ronaldo Lopez. This was an interesting one. I'm very surprised he won the job on Atlanta. You know, he hasn't been a starter in a couple of years, and rightfully so, because last time he was a starter, it just didn't go so well. Uh, you know, <laughs> He had an ERA of 538 the last time he was a start, like the last time he had a full season as a starter in 2019. In 2021, he had what? Uh, nine games started. He had a 343 ERA, and I think he met some injuries. But then he's just been a bullpen guy ever since. And to see him go and take that after not having you know a starter feel for quite some time going into age 30 season, I'm a little wary of it. But at the same time, he had a nice spring. So... You kind of got to take it like this. The Braves allowed him to have the job for short term, at least. I'm sure the leash isn't long. And you look at his spring numbers with a 216 ERA, 16 innings pitched, and 13 strikeouts with a .96 whip. You got to say, okay, there is something there. It's just how long is this going to last? Or, you know, is this just, you know, the fact that he didn't get to pitch five innings straight, six innings straight? Are they even going to let him go five innings straight? That's the other thing. Is he going to be able to go and get, um, the QS or everybody, if you play in a league that requires QS or even for points, you know, there's, there's a couple different factors with Ronaldo Lopez, but at least I'm doing a speculative ad, especially when all these injuries just popped up right before the season started. So if I'm hedging bets, it's going to be interesting to see how he plans out, but he might be the guy I'm going to, you know, scratch a lottery ticket on, you know, and see how I make out over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, Ronaldo Lopez is probably like, at the bottom of, yeah. you know, the barrel when it comes to the names we're talking about today. But the team makes it interesting. The team context makes it interesting. Atlanta, you can't really go wrong with this, a guy that's in Atlanta starting, you know, pitcher rotation. What scares me the most about Ronaldo Lopez is he's a two-pitch pitcher. And, you know, he's not Spencer Strider. So I don't know if he's going to be able to get away with it, you know, moving back into the rotation. That was really his downfall, you know, back in the day, as, you know, Matt was talking, you know, 2018, 19, when he was, you know, in the rotation. Didn't even put up great numbers back then, and much has not changed since then. So, Ronaldo Lopez, um, I mean, what's the ownership percentage here? Um, bear with me. 15. Uh, oh, no. I'm, yeah, I think 15. I'm seeing 15. Am I wrong? You're right. You're right. You're right. But yeah, 15% for Ronaldo Lopez here on Yahoo. Definitely could throw um, an ad his way if you missed out on all the other guys we talked about today and just see where the thing goes. Uh, but let's sneak one last guy in here before we have an ad for you guys. Uh, I want to talk about Sedane Raffaella real quick. You know, has shortstop and outfield eligibility on Yahoo. Somebody came up who came up last year on um, 46% owned on um, Yahoo. Uh, won, won a job. He's going to be playing for Boston and has that prospect pedigree, you know, that we all like to see. 
Shortstop and outfield are two positions that are super thin at the moment. So if Sedan Rafael is out there, you can definitely go out there and throw him and add his way. 23 games this spring for Rafaela, 63 at-bats, 8 runs, 6 doubles, 3 homers, 10 RBIs, 5 steals. Uh, four walks to 13 strikeouts, which is eh, uh, 270 batting average, though. Uh, once again, not one of the better, the best guys we're talking about today, but somebody who's interesting, has a little bit of pop, has some speed. Uh, you know, like I said, in the minors last year, um, Rafael played 108 games, had 80 runs, had um, 31 doubles, three triples, 20 homers, 36 steals, 79 RBIs, and he hit 302. So somebody that, you know, like I said, you know, might not be the best guy to add right now, but somebody who we can, you know, um, you know, throw a dart at if you need a shortstop or an outfielder. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I'll give my take after the break here. You know, we got guys like Brandon Lowe, obviously my half of us, uh, Dane Raphael, um, and two pitchers that I think honestly might also be able to provide some some short-term relief. And uh, yeah, and had killer springs, but we'll be right back after this. All right. So, Sedane Raphael. Love it. Um, I like the upside. I like who he could be. Um, I don't really need to say much, actually. So, I don't know why I hop back in on it. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he kind of did a flawless do- job, you know, flawless victory over here. Thank you. Was- Appreciate it, brother. I'm going to, I'm going to move on here. Actually. Uh, let's talk Brandon Lowe, Brandon Lowe. Um, the name is kind of gives me cringes cause he screams flanges. Um, you know, sorry, flanges. I understand what it actually is, but it's my term for injury prone. Cause it's funnier. Um, my guy is just loves to get hurt and loves to go through stints of like just really bad batting average, but still is able to provide, you know, you know, runs, ribbies and home runs. So like last year he opened up like a bat out of hell and started off April with seven home runs. You know, got hurt pretty much instantly <laughs> in May and June, and then was able to come back at the end of June. July provided five home runs, batted 284, cooled off and had three home runs, and then September had four home runs, batted 246. Through that time, though, he's also had 18 ribs, 11 ribs, 13 ribs, 12 ribs, 14 ribs. This is each month down the, down the line. So he was just still able to contribute throughout so even with his bad performances it was just literally destroying your batting average and also too he's not your prototypical second baseman where like if you're lacking in power you can slide him in and get that power boost especially if you have guys like bobby witt or ronald acuna and you want to fit a, a power guy in this would be the perfect slot to do it and brandon Lowe would be the perfect guy to do it with yeah, he, he's such an interesting guy, man. If he could just really stay healthy, yeah. you know, he, the, the power is so legit. The batting average, you know, um, is kind of suspect. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he hit anywhere from like, you know, like 235 to 245. But that's not killing you these days if he hits you 30 plus home runs and has some good RBIs and chips in, you know, maybe like maybe in today's day and age, maybe 10 steals. You know, we chipped in seven last year. He's still only 29 years old and, you know, uh, with, with Brandon Lau, the, the like you know, I really said that the exit velocity is good, the underlying stuff is good for the power. What's his ownership percentage, by the way? And second base is another position that is kind of tough 38% owned. I, I would definitely, you know, throw a dart in his direction. Uh, but let's move on to another starting pitcher, somebody who you know won the job out of spring mainly due to injuries. Uh, Trevor Rogers, and you know, kind of how the mighty have fallen, somebody that was in uh. You know, the running for, you know, rookie of the year, uh, you know, a few years ago has kind of fallen off injury bug, you know, has been, you know, thrown his way as well. But hey, you know what? He's healthy, you know, coming into the year. Uh, the spring training actually pretty solid for Trevor Rogers. Three starts, three twelve ERA, eight innings, 10 strikeouts, 103 whip. Uh, it's just that I don't know if he can ever really get back to the, you know, the form of glory. I would love to, you know, see him try, you know, guys still only 26 years old. And, you know, uh, another, another name that I probably say is kind of towards the lower tiers, probably got him behind, uh, you know, I'm not going to, if you want to know where I got him ranked, you come to the subtext for that kind of stuff. Uh, but with Trevor Rogers at, you know, 4% rostered, probably the lowest percent rostered, um, you know, guy we're talking about today, a lot of upside. Uh, I definitely could see myself, you know, adding Trevor Rogers, and I actually do have him on one team right now. So I do have, you know, a little bit of Trevor Rogers at the moment. Yeah, I mean, exposure is good. We could see what happens. Obviously, there's upside, but I mean, in in this pitching landscape this year, he's not the worst at. Probably not the best on this list, but I definitely take him over, you know, a Ronaldo Lopez, for instance. Um, you know, I just, I. 
it, it's one of those things where I, I want to see what kind of happens with him. But at the same time, you know, the leash is real short on my on my roster, at least. So we just got to take it, take it day by day, start by start and pretty much just stream him, I feel. Uh, and we kind of go from there. But all right, I'm going to move on because Dom, Dom did a fantastic job on Trevor Rogers. I got this next guy that I'm kind of into. Uh, and we have some time where I can actually take a little bit of a deep dive on him. Uh, we're going to talk in Ranger Suarez of the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, Ranger has, has an interesting, you know, kind of like role here on Philly, right? Where like he is one of their guys. He's like the fifth pitcher, fourth pitcher in that rotation and like gets the leash, but at the same time, doesn't have a leash. You know, it's like a hate love relationship with the manager and him and also me on my fantasy team. Because when they let him go further than four innings and they don't do, do more of like an opener garbage to him, he is successful. He's a run suppressor. It keeps the ball, you know, ball on the ground or and doesn't really strike out that many guys. But at the same time, he's very valuable in the ERA, the whip category with the Philly team. He's also able to get, you know, add and contribute in the wins category. Ranger has a lot of upside. Uh, you know, it just not in the not in the natural way that we all desire or look for. You know, he's a. He's he's uh how do we put this a guy that that's out there just to literally keep your ERA and whip down without contributing too much in there. But if he chips in, I don't know, four strikeouts and gets gives up like a one ERA. I'm not really mad at it <laughs> on the week, but the weeks he gets blown up, he can hurt you in those short stints. So it's just a risky play. But right now I'm saying Adam because I mean, being down woo, being down Yuri and all the other guys, it's just it's really hard out there for a. For pitching and I don't the pitching influx isn't even going to be that great because we're still not seeing you know Verlanders and all the other guys that went down so you know Ranger Suarez might be one of our better options and that kind of sucks but uh, this is kind of what we got to deal with to begin this season uh, I feel like I've gone too long, Tom. Please, yeah, please Matt, uh, I, I could I could spread a little positivity me. into Ranger Suarez. Let, let, let's you. let's try and take that route. So with Ranger Suarez, the last three years, so we're talking about 2021 to 2023. It's 63 starts, uh, 90 games overall. So some of these games are out of the bullpen, but a 319 ERA, 386 innings, 355 strikeouts with a 126 WHIP, a 356 FIP over that time, which is fielding independent pitching ERA indicator. Um, so he hasn't been that bad. Definitely serviceable when it comes to fantasy baseball. Matt, did you throw out his ownership percentage? Um, I did not. Um, yeah, so let me see if I could pull that. I'll pull it up, keep it going. Yeah, yeah. So with Ranger Suarez, you know, when that Phillies team is going to win games, so he's going to get you some wins, uh, as Matt said, they want to let him. Yeah, so right right at that ownership percentage we're looking at. Uh, honestly, I like Ranger Suarez over Ronaldo Lopez and Trevor Rogers. So definitely um, somebody that you can look in the direction and, you know, going into the season that's going to pitch for a good team and is going to give you decent stats. And, hey, still 28 years old. So there is upside here with Ranger Suarez. But let's move on to what I think might be our last name. Let's talk about Tyler Wells. Uh, Tyler Wells is somebody, you know, in that Baltimore rotation, uh, right now it's, is opening day. And last time I checked, you know, before we started recording, I think the Orioles are up seven, one, uh, so Baltimore's looking really, really dominant right now. And Hey, Tyler Wells had a very serviceable season, uh, last year as a 28 year old three, six, four, we are right. 20 starts a one, 118 innings, 117 strikeouts and a 098 whip. And throughout Tyler Wells' career, he's always been very good with his control. Um, the whip has always been very good. Uh, somebody that, like I said, you know, you know, maybe not a, a super sexy ad at the moment, but I'll tell you this: we've talked about Matt, what, like six starting pitchers today. Yep. I guarantee two to three weeks from now, there's not going to be six starting pitchers that are going to say, "Hey, you know what? You can throw out, get there, go out there and get these guys." Um, you know, still 35% owned for Tyler Wells. It's not going to be like that. You know, every once in a while, we'll see uh, maybe once or twice a year, we'll see the Spencer Strider or somebody, the Yuri Perez, you know, come up and, you know, shock the world. But it's not going to be, hey, here's six starting pitchers. You guys can go out right now and, you know, add to your team that might be breakouts um, that are still fairly young. You know, like Tyler Wells, you know, I mean, 29, but still, you know, uh, has shown a lot of improvement over the last couple of years. You know, Chase Silseth is another name I, I really, really love. Uh, Matt, your thoughts on Tyler Wells here before we head out? Honestly, like the only thing I like I could say that truthfully backs up everything you said is the fact of how he started off the season last year. Was a reliable starter, was a great pickup. And just kind of could do his thing. But, yeah, I mean, we'll see. 
I, I'm kind of like this at this point. Pitching is ugly this year. We're going to have to just navigate. Worst case, we're just going to have to stream every week in and week out. Um, Captain Haterade over here, I guess. But uh, with the, all that, man, yo, get me out of here. Matt, <laughs> I, I, I gotta, I'm going to break some bad news on the podcast. So um, Royce Lewis has exited the game limping after hitting a home run in his first at-bat. Uh, the Royce, let's hope Royce Lewis is okay. But on, on a, on a somber note, um, guys, that's all for today. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Also, thank you to our everydayers and new listeners for making Lockdown Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. Until tomorrow, see you. Peace.